Hey everybody, Wendy Klinky with Blue Cat Studio. I'm so excited to be resuming our Technique Tuesdays. Happy New Year. It's great to be back. So today we're going to discuss um, composition. So let me just outline this really briefly. Um, when you know when you're trying to do a, a project or a design, sometimes you don't really know how to how, how to pull it together. So the the concept we're going to cover today is from Edgar Payne's 15 Archetypes of Composition. And this one's called Steel Yard. And I will just sort of show you the basic archetype and then we'll actually put it into action. So this one is considered, and I don't know why it's called Steel Yard, but um, it may have to do, you know, I, don't, I really don't know. So it has like a big piece and then you have a small piece, right? And they kind of are in balance with one another. And then you kind of create some sort of a, a fulcrum. And the idea is that because this one is heavier, it has to take up a larger portion of the, of the picture. And this one is smaller, so it's going to be kind of off. Now this can be done both by different size of things or it can be done with perspective. So we're gonna flip this guy over and now I don't have a design here yet, but we're gonna draw one together. I, we're going to use the topic of a polar bear. Okay, so here let's talk, let's look at how do we draw a polar bear in general. So we're going to do kind of a a lump for a head. Then we're going to do kind of a roundy triangle. And notice that you know if you're going to split the sky in half, the roundy triangle is a little bit up at the top there. And then a little nose and a mouth, and then just some things for eyes. A couple of ears out to either side. Okay, cool. That's that's uh, you know, and we could give them open eyes if we wanted. That's that's polar bear, polar bear 101. Hey there, Holly. She says, Happy New Year, Blue Cat. Happy New Year, my dear. All right, so I'm just gonna pop something up here real quick. Um, if you are watching from my free group, awesome, or you're watching from the inner circle, awesome. If you're on my page and you haven't yet had a chance to join the Let's Paint with Blue Cat group, please do so. All right, so now that we've kind of done polar bear 101 or how to draw a bear 101. We're going to do a little sketch on this side and then you guys can decide if you want me to actually paint it or we're just going to sketch it and call it good so again considering the concept of the fulcrum the heavy guy here the lighter guy here and whatnot like that we know i'm going to say the heavy guy is going to go here so we're going to do a big polar bear kind of in this zone right here and notice how he's taking up almost half of the page and then he's going to be kind of so we'll give him a little neck thing here coming off we're, we're roughing them in first, right? Let's make it kind of a lumpy head. Okay, and then we go, okay, well then we want another little guy and we'll put him kind of right here. And do you see how now we kind of have that, that play of, of big and heavy and dominant versus smaller and less dominant. So if we're then gonna fill this guy in, we'll again kind of take that cute little, little, little muzzle, kind of create it here in his mouth, his little eyes. And again, we're keeping this fairly, Fairly cartoonish, you know, I don't want you to feel like, oh, I can't draw, so I can't do this. The idea is that you sort of see how you can quickly create a cute composition using the concept of the steel yard, the big heavy, and then the smaller lighter weight guy. So here we could do another, another bear, kind of again, the lumpy head, tilt his head a little bit. And also notice just for fun, this is, I don't know if this is in the, in the composition 101 or not, but um, because he's leaning in slightly, it makes sense for this guy to lean in a little bit too, almost as if they're kind of gravitating towards one another. And then little eyes, little eyes, little bad eyes. Give him a little scarf that kind of goes, woo. And then here, let's, 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 since we got to show his body, we'll do some paws here like so. I don't know. And then, okay, here, we'll do some more paws. Those just little feet. Bloop, 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 bloop. Toe beads. Claws, 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 and then some kind of bulky knees from our, our buddy here. And then, I don't know, should we give him like a little hat just for fun? That was a ridiculous hat. I don't know if we need hats on our polar bears, but they make me laugh. And so there you go. That was That's kind of a very, very fast way to come up with an idea and then just literally like whip it out. So if we're going to take this to the next step. I'm going to break out a permanent marker here and just kind of black in the lines so they're a little easier to see. And we'll give him a little bit of a, a lump on his head. 
And again, if you're like, I don't really know how to draw a polar bear, this is kind of me going on Pinterest and looking at like 20 different types of polar bears and borrowing elements of each to kind of create a polar bear concept. Because you know what? I couldn't remember how to draw one straight off my head, but this doesn't look like any particular polar bear. It's kind of just like our original polar bear based on what we found. So Pinterest is kind of an amazing tool, just saying. And then here's our, our fun, lumpy, goofy polar bear. And I don't know if we give him like an arm or something or if that just looks funny. And then we'll come over here and we'll, well, I'm going to stick with permanent marker on this guy, even though it's a little funky. This guy's dying. Let's grab a better one. And we'll give him a little head. Eh. Probably should use a smaller. I should use a smaller pen on this guy because he is smaller. So I don't know. Should I turn this guy into like an actual painting? Right now he's just an idea and just an illustration of what. we can do with scale and not just scale, sorry, composition. And so this actually kind of works. Now, if we wanted to kind of take it the next step, you know, we could give this sort of like a, a horizon line here maybe, which helps kind of balance it. So now this guy actually looks like he's sitting on something. I don't know, maybe that's, I don't know, what else do we have in here? We could put some, some trees back here if we wanted, although I feel like that would kind of take away from this. You could almost even just do like a split color. So if we were having fun, let's see, let's, let's just throw some paint on. I don't even have a palette. Let's just throw some blue on and see what this will become, right? Cause we're playing today, right? Yeah, we're playing. Hey Linda, how's it going? Good to see you. So this is one of our technique Tuesdays, Linda. This is kind of a, a fairly new thing that we kicked off a couple, like a month or two ago, three whatever. And it's really the idea of just kind of talking about composition and helping give you ideas and sort of the elements of how to create original art and the things that we think about in order to make an effective design. So we spent a whole month um, covering color schemes and color theory. And so sometimes right in the middle of a painting, I'll like, okay, guys, pop quiz, what color are we using? Oh, icebergs. Hey, Holly, good idea. Okay. So we're going to give it just a basic blue. And this was Bahama blue. And again, I'm just kind of plopping this in. Um, and this is just from like a sketch I did literally a couple minutes before coming online. And what I did is I said, okay, I want to do this concept of a steel yard, which was the two weighted pieces, the big heavy guy and the lighter guy. And, you know, I could do a landscape, but, you know, around here we tend to do really funny ones. Um, Linda says, I'm running late. My family wanted food. Well, you know what? I haven't been live for very long, just a couple minutes. Um, but the idea is that we're, we're trying to show how you can play with, with composition to create and, and sort of different elements to create a, a cool design. So all I knew was I needed to do steel yard and I knew I wanted to do, which again is that, that scale thing I just painted over and I knew I wanted to do polar bears. And so how am I going to come up with a cool polar bear design? using those two elements. And so it was very easy to say, all right, well, we'll just repeat the polar bear and we'll do the big guy who takes up all this space being the big piece. And, you know, I should have taped this. Well, that's okay. My, 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 my little metal bits here need some decoration, right? That's my thought. So we'll do this guy as the big piece to take up all the space. And then we'll do another cute little guy, full body where we can, uh oh, I'm going to mess up my shirts where we can kind of, see everything, you know, for the, the small scale. And so again, this could be with like a tall tree and a short tree. It could be with buildings. So oftentimes a cityscape and you'll find that this is one of those things that you naturally do. You don't even think about, but sometimes, you know, you, you when you're doing a thing, you don't really know how to format a thing. I, you know, I've used the word thing so many times. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm trying to say like, you have an idea in mind. And sometimes, you know, you get tired of just doing like, all right, we're just going to do a, a picture of a polar bear, which is fun. But if you want to add a little whimsy, sometimes adding some of these elements of composition in can just make it a little bit extra or a little bit, a little bit slightly different from what, say, everybody else is doing. Right. So, again, I have not got this totally planned out by any stretch. I figured I'd come on here and sketch it and call it good. But 
now I'm feeling like that sketch went so much faster than I expected that we might as well just, you know, jump in and paint it, right? So let me grab a, a water thing so I can rinse my rinse my brush. It's my handy dandy Tostitos salsa thing. And then we'll just grab a, an old textbook, not one I ever used. I just got it like at the library. I'm just offloading my paint. Okay, so next up we've got to, whoops, hold on, I'm all tangled. Okay, next up we've got to kind of do something with him. And since it's snow colored and ice, and let me just grab a palette. Oh, you guys, I totally wasn't planning on painting. I was like, we're just going to sketch. But you know what, let's do this. Okay, so we'll add some white. And then I'm going to add some fun colors. So polar bears are, of course, mostly white. And I'm going to give them a little bit of fluorescent, because why not, right? A little fluorescent orange there. Fluorescent red, excuse me. That's fluorescent red. I use the Blick fluorescent red. You could also use the Liquitex Basics. I haven't seen DecoArt pull off anything even remotely awesome in this color range, so I can't recommend them for that particularly. So we'll take the white, plop it over here, grab just the tiniest kiss of the orange and mix it in so that it's just barely off and we'll just kind of, just kind of color. Whoops, I left some blue on my brush, didn't I? Whoopsie daisies. I'll make a little bit more of that. And we'll just kind of color him in roughly. And the beauty of doing the permanent markers, I can totally see my work underneath. So I can kind of fill in. Now, again, if this was a canvas and a formal painting, I'd probably be taking my time and being really careful about it but this is just kind of an idea that I wanted to flesh out with you guys. So you could kind of see, all right, so we got some shadows going on because I clearly keep finding blue in my brush despite thinking I've gotten it out because I'm too lazy to rinse. It's cool though, right? Because we are sketching. And so oftentimes also when I do think about sketching, this is a great thing for you to do as well if you're trying to create original art is consider doing like really tiny sketches. Like, you know, you saw earlier, I drew that little that little square um, to show the scale. And that's often a great way. So for example, here, here's a behind the scenes. Here are my notes, right? Here was me saying, okay, well, I think I like the idea of a big guy and a little guy. And I even wrote myself, Edgar Payne, 15 ar archetypes of composition. And this is, steel yard because you know what I knew I'd get all like excited and chat chatty chatty Kathy and I'd forget oops okay so I grabbed some some of that brighter fluorescent red and I'm just going to kind of put it in the insides of his ears and I think I'll use it on his snout but I'm still it's still a bit diluted with a white I don't want it to be super super bright and I know it's like it's like a pinkish orange polar bear but why not right because we can We'll do the bottoms of his feet with that on his ears. All right, grabbing back some more of that white to make his body. Whoosh, too much orange in there. Orange, red, whatever. So Inner Circle folks, if you want to make this into a tracer just for fun, I will happily do that. Might need a day or two to just kind of get it pulled together because again, I'm just kind of sketching around here. Do let me know. All right, so now, now we have a pinkish polar bear. I don't know if I like that. I think it should go the other way. It should be lighter, huh? I'm gonna make it lighter. And we'll just pink him up a little bit around here. Why not, right? Now he looks like a lamb with those pinky ears. <laughs> So again, I'm just kind of backtracking because I did a thing and I didn't quite like it. So just trying to trying to fix it a little. So he's a little pinkish, but I think he still kind of looks somewhat whitish. Or we just have pink polar bears because you know I like pink and I'm unstoppable with that. Again, you just kind of fill him in. He's super cute. Okay, so pop quiz, my friends. Whoops, wrong color. What color scheme are we using? Does anybody remember? 
Okay, so Holly says, are the big and small polar bears leaning in a bit so the image doesn't wander off? Yeah, also because it kind of allows them to feel like they're relating to one another. Because if they were leaning off in opposite directions, they'd look like they weren't friends and they had nothing to do with one another. But when you have them leaning in towards one another, um, kind of like in photos, when people are leaning away from each other, their body language says, I don't like you. Um, and, you know, we try and paint positive around here. Um, whereas when people are leaning in towards one another, it kind of says, I like you. And that's kind of the, what's behind the psychology or whatever of, of why they're leaning. It, 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 it actually puts them in better relation to, to one another when they're leaning towards each other versus when they're not. This guy's got big ears. Okay. So, you know, we got, we got us some, some funky little polar bears. Now, if I'm really thinking, you know, I could take just some of this orange and maybe give him a little bit of a, a shadow. I could even play with the horizon line a little bit. And again, I'm just playing with two colors. Do they make any sense at all in here whatsoever? Maybe, maybe not, but you still are kind of getting the feel for what we have here, right? It oddly enough, it still kind of works. So now I could actually take that fluorescent red and just do his hat and that, just kind of glop it on. Color scheme as in primary colors or something else. Um, all right, so when we talk about color schemes, Holly, do you remember how we had like um, complementary colors? We had tertiaries, we had, or the triadic stuff. We had um, analogous, we had monochromatic. So each bear is kind of monochromatic because it's all within a very short range of colors. However, when you look at the blue versus the reddy orange, or the greenish, the greenish blue and the reddish orange, you have complementary colors here. I hope that makes sense. And that was one of the, the things that we talked about in, in our colors, our color, um, color theory sessions in mostly in November. In fact, we even did a color wheel for those of you who are new. And I absolutely love the, doing the color wheel because Sometimes when you're not quite sure about, you know, how, how you'd like to do your colors, just referring back to that can kind of give you some hints. And that's what I'm really hoping is that in all of these lessons, you start to pick up a few sort of hints and ideas or when you're stuck or you look at a thing and say, you know, why isn't this working or how do I make this work so much better? You can use some of these lessons to, to kind of get it where you want it to be. So Linda says, um, yeah, everything you do is so intentional. Well, so some of you're funny because yes, it is kind of intentional, but so often I also tend to, you know, some of this comes naturally and it comes naturally to a lot of us, but when we get stuck and we're not sure why things aren't working, um, going back to, you know, our theory and the intentions behind it can really, can really help. So for example, you know, this whole concept came up because I knew I wanted to do polar bears and I knew I needed to do this particular, um, the concept of, 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 of composition, right? So eh, we need to amp this guy up. We need some pen or some paint or whatever. Let me get rid of this, but you can kind of see where it's going. Like they, they look cute and they work together. In fact, I'm going to cheat and I'm going to use some, some pen, I think. Cause again, this is a, a sketch. This is a concept. Now, if we wanted to flesh this out, I would probably do it in less than like 18 minutes, right? Okay, so Holly says, yeah, I was going off the blue, red, and yellow primary idea. Yeah, that makes sense. Let me see, where is my color? I don't know where my color wheel is. I've totally like cleaned up my studio for New Year's and things are, I'm not every which way right now. Well, you know, sort of every which way and sort of organized. It's like a mixed bag. I don't know where my color wheel is. I'm so I'm sorry. I was going to show you guys, but basically these two are dead opposite each other on the on the color wheel. And ooh, I got wet spots. All right, can't have wet spots in your paint. That is okay. So on this one, if I tossed in yellow, it would be triadic. Yeah, I mean this has got some green in it, and this is kind of an orangey. But you're right. I am almost triadic. It's kind of kind of pushing the bounds. This one is, it's somewhere between orange and red. I think if I'd done like a mermaid tail teal, which is even greener or like a, like a, a bluegrass green, then it would be completely um, complimentary. 
oops, dropping stuff. Okay. So then I could take a paint pen or a permanent marker. I think we'll go with my, my Sharpie that's dying just because I'm not, I'm not confident in my stuff. And we could just kind of redraw some of these bits here, kind of bring the guy back. And it's amazing how like just a little sketchy sketch here can kind of bring it, bring it all around. Oh yeah, look, I'm getting like little wet paint bits on my, on my pen. Good. So we used the cheap dyeing one instead of my fancy nice one, which I don't want to dye yet. And again, it's like kind of no big fuss here. Oops. Ugh. You guys see all that red gunk on that? That is me breaking my own rules. I sketch this guy in easier little nosy nose. This guy comes together a little bit better. He's so he's cute. I think he's cute. I hope like when you guys paint, you always are just like kind of chortling to yourselves and hopefully your work makes you happy. It's kind of like always my goal. Let's get that hat in a little bit. Okay, and then we can maybe kind of reinforce the horizon line. And so that's basically a super fast sketch. You know, I didn't even bother rinsing my brush, which may or may not have been a good idea. Um, you know, it's for a, a polar bear and again, showing different ideas of composition. So again, I know I'm repeating myself a couple of times on this concepts of comp composition, but I also just want to make sure that, you know, as you're joining or you're, you know, we, we, we kind of keep our focus on, you know, what this is really about and it's how to create that kind of balance. Um, and, you know, it was asked before and I absolutely love it. it. They lean in towards each other so that they look like they're kind of friends and they relate to each other. All right. So again, I'm just noticing a few spots um, where we have lights and darks, and I'm trying to make sure that we have a little bit of contrast. So each bear is pretty much what I would consider monochromatic because I just used, you know, this fluorescent red and white, and I could have used some blacks and whatnot to tune it as well. But here, let's, let's play with this hat a little bit. And then we can kind of give his, his neckerchief a little something. You know, if you want to, you don't have to. I'm going to leave this one alone just because it's um, just because he's so small and I'm using one brush and keeping it simple. So there you go. So next time you're playing with an idea, you can always just do your polar bear if you want. But if you're like, well, wouldn't it be fun? How do I make it more interesting? How do I tell a story? That's when you add your second polar bear in there and you play with and you play with the elements of composition and the the size and again. So going back for those of you who just, where did I put it? Joined. This one is called Steel Yard and it shows things on a scale, a big thing and a little thing. And it's kind of around what we call the fulcrum. And again, so the, so you want the majority, the big thing kind of closer to that fulcrum. So if the fulcrum of this is the middle, which is the balance point, we want this guy here and this guy way out kind of on the ledge and balancing. If they were smushed together, I'd have like a lot of dead sort of what's the point of that space. Whereas here, all the space in front of him, it, 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 sh it helps tell the story of distance so that he just doesn't look like some weird tiny polar bear sitting on a shelf over this guy's, you know, shoulder. Now, if we were going to do that and we wanted him to be on a shelf over this guy's shoulder, then we'd have to give him some wings or something ridiculous to make him look that way. Right. Okay. And now just some of this white I'm adding adds a little bit of texture and keeps it from just being a big blue, a blue form. So anyways, I hope, I hope you guys had fun with this. If you want me to turn this into a tracer, I'm totally happy to do so. I might tweak it so he's a little less wonky. Um, but anyways, this was just a fun, really quick, at this point, 25 minute whip out a fun project and, and all that good stuff. So if you are not yet part of the Let's Paint with Blue, Blue Cat Studio group, please, please, please go ahead and join us. Uh, I put in the very first comment. Let me see if I can actually highlight it or not. Can I highlight that? Show. 
Yeah. So if you haven't joined the group yet, um, please go to Facebook groups. Let's paint with blue cat and put your request in. If you're watching this from the group, well, you're awesome. Or if you're watching this from the inner circle, also you're awesome. You guys are the VIPs that get access to everything, everything, everything. And let's see here. And let's see. Uh, Linda said, what a terrific lesson. So much information. Thank you. I'm so glad this was helpful. I, I aim to help you guys become really the artist that you want to become. And so often we sort of sit down and we do a thing and we're not really sure, you know, where we're going with it or it doesn't quite work. And so just coming back to some of the basics can really be very foundational and effective in taking a design from, from meh to hot diggity. I love it. All right, you guys. I will catch you next week for our Technique Tuesday, where we'll continue to cover some of the different um, archetypes of composition. So again, this one was Steel Yard. And hopefully I can come up with like a reference sheet that sort of shows you those guys. I found this through Edgar Payne. He came up with this like 80 years ago or something. Um, and so if you Googled it, you could totally find this. Um, and I figure this is just a fun way to do it. But if you prefer to just sit back, watch the videos and and learn and see see the use of the use of those composition elements as we develop a design, then stay tuned and I'll catch you next week. So usually I go live around 7 p.m. Uh, I was a little bit late today because I was having a major uh, FY22 or excuse me, fiscal year 22, like a, a calendar year 22 planning session with a couple of my peers. Um, but yeah, usually you'll find me online 7 p.m. Eastern time. And I think that's it. Love you guys. And I'll see you next time. Bye.